A very warm morning to all present here. My name is Lavenda Dremonding and I am the Ancillary Sales Associate Manager at Colomet San Jose del Monte Bulacan. And with me today is... Good morning everyone. I am Paul Ali. I'm the trainer of Colomet San Jose del Monte from Human Resources Department and we will be your moderators for this webinar. Okay, so today we are presenting um, Health Talk at your fingertips, the Qualimed Hospital San Jose del Monte online lecture series. So last January, nagkaroon din po tayo ng online lecture series. And now, no, sa buwan na ito in celebration of Women's Month, okay, we have another lecture series for you guys. So just a little housekeeping before we get started. Please keep your microphones on mute, and if you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the question box in your Zoom control panel if you are using Zoom, or through Facebook comment section if you are watching us through Facebook Live. I'll bring them up during the question and answer live forum later. And of course, no, uh, we would like to start this program with a player. So, Loren. All right, let us pray. Our dearest Heavenly Father, thank you for making all things possible. We are grateful for all the blessings that you are pouring upon each one of us, despite the challenges that we are all currently facing. Thank you for blessing us today with this wonderful opportunity to meet virtually and learn together in this health webinar. May your blessings of wisdom and guidance be upon us all through the sharing and impartation of knowledge and skills by our resource speakers. May all of us learn together, upgrade our competencies, and capacitate us to be of help in the development of our learners' lives and communities in the spirit of your love and generosity. May we now humbly commit our every part of this webinar to you as we all bring you the glory, honor, and praises for your kingdom and holy name's sake. All this we pray in the precious and almighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, so... Of course, to formally begin this event, I would like to invite our medical director to deliver the opening remarks. Please all welcome Dr. Angel A. De La Razabal. Yes, uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you, PJ. So I hope all of you are well with no um, side effects of the va vaccines. So to formally open, dear colleagues and guests who are virtually connected in this meeting room, Welcome to the webinar organized by Qualimed Hospital San Jose del Monte in Bulacan to celebrate the 2021 National Women's Month and the International Ear Care Day. As the title says on this month's online lecture series, I hope that our discussion today will help us to improve both the condition and the position of women in our current situation, as well as knowing the essentials of our hearing health. I want to commend our presenters for accepting our invitation to share their, their, um, their time and um, expertise today. Notably, uh, Dr. Mel Cruz from ENT will be talking about um, ear and hearing health, and Dr. Pam Varela uh, will be talking about uh, pregnancy during pandemic. I also want to uh, recognize that um, want to thank the Active Hearing Center who have accepted to collaborate with us in this session. And I hope this online lectures um, series will bring new insights um, to our guests. And um, thank you so much. And I wish you uh, get um, valuable information from this. Again, uh, ingat ng lahat. Maraming salamat po. Thank you, PJ. Dr. Thank you, PJ. So now uh, we will now be um, presenting our first speaker. 
can we have the slide of our speaker? All right. So um, our first speaker is uh, otorhinolaryngology, head and neck surgery and visiting consultant at Qualimed Hospital SJDM. She took Doctor of Medicine at Far Eastern University, Dr. Nicanor Reyes Medical Foundation. She obtained her residency for otorhinolaryngology, head and neck surgery at East Avenue Medical Center. She had her fellowship training for otology, neuroautology, and audiology at East Avenue Medical Center. She's currently a fellow at the Philippine Society of Otorhinolaryngology, Head and Neck Surgery Incorporated. And it is now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Melanie Grace Y. Cruz. Good morning, doctor. Uh, hello. Good morning. Thank you for having me here. Let me just... Uh, can you hear me well? Yes, doctor. Okay. Can I share my screen now? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Can you can you see my screen? Yes, doctor. All right. Okay. Hold on. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Dr. Melanie Cruz from the Department of ENT and. I'm going to talk about the essentials of ear and hearing health, right? So this lecture is primarily patterned on the material released by the WHO, specifically for its advocacies for hearing. Okay. March 3 is the world, a little bit of trivia. So March 3 is World Hearing Day, okay? It's because March 3 or 3-3, three, three does not merely represent a day full of sales from the Sada or Shopee, but it actually represents two years. Kaya siya March 3. Okay. So for my objectives, okay. so for my objectives, I'm going to talk about hearing loss and deafness, causes of hearing loss across different ages, how we are, how we are going to detect hearing loss, how we can prevent it, and what we can do once we've detected these uh, uh, hearing loss. I hope most of you know Mark Ruffalo. Can you notice anything about him? Okay. How about Neely Bobby Brown? Played, um, she played 11 in Stranger Things, right? And maybe you know Whoopi Goldberg. She, she is an EGOT awardee. Okay. What do you notice about them? Okay. They're all celebrities. But aside from that, they are they all have hearing loss okay so not only them there are most musicians eric clapton phil collins one of the beach boys beethoven okay but not all of us know this because it is not easily seen hearing loss is often called invisible an invisible disability it affects nearly 40 million americans probably more worldwide but there are no visible markers to signal to others that you are that you have a disability. So all of these people, including yung know, Shatner, si Bill Clinton, uh, they all have hearing loss. Okay. What do we mean when we say hearing loss? So hearing loss is when a person is unable to hear as well as someone with normal hearing. And hearing loss ranges from mild to profound. So much like how we are we gauge vision using yung grades, we can also put in some grades to adding hearing. So it can affect one or both ears. And nearly one in 16 people worldwide have hearing loss that impacts their daily life. So if we are 40 here, at least two or three of us have disabling hearing loss. Okay. So what do we mean by disabling hearing loss? It means hearing loss that uh, that is greater than 35 decibels in the better hearing ear. It actually affects communication. And nearly 80 of people with disabling hearing loss live in low and middle income countries. So that includes the Philippines. And the prevalence of hearing loss increases with age. Among those older than 60 years old, over 25% are affected by disabling hearing loss. So when we become dual citizens or senior citizens, you have a 25% chance of developing hearing loss. 
So over 1.5 billion people are affected by hearing loss. And of them, nearly one out of three need hearing care. And 80% live in low- and middle-income countries, including the Philippines. And currently, hearing loss is on the rise. And countries must act now to provide access to ear and hearing care for all. So from 1.5 billion in 2019, it is projected to be at around 2.5 billion by 2050. Okay. This is the percentage of individuals with hearing loss by age and severity. And as you can see, Hearing loss is not only found in the elderly. Although it is more common, once you've reached the, uh, 60, you have a 25% chance. And when you reach 80, 80% 80 chance of developing hearing loss. But it can be seen across all ages. Well, let's start with some a case. So Coco was cleaning her ear with a cotton bud when, when her sister accidentally bumped her elbow, pushing the cotton bud inside. So she was brought to a doctor, to an ENT, who said that her eardrum is perforated. So what do you think? Will she lose her e hearing on that ear? Okay. So most commonly, people have this notion that if the tympanic membrane or if the eardrum is perforated, bingi na. Okay? But it is not true. Okay? Hindi siya talaga bingi. The hearing quality may be affected, but the patient is not necessarily deaf. Okay? I just turned off my video para. Okay. So let's start. How do we hear muna? Let's discuss that. So as sound enters our ear canal, yan yung pina natin, the sound, the vibrations will travel along the ear canal and hit the eardrum. After it hits the eardrum, it will move the three small bones in our ear. And this movement will also move the fluid inside our inner ear or cochlea. And that is how we are able to hear. So as you can see, the eardrum or the tympanic membrane is just a part of the entire system that allows you to hear. Okay? Part lang siya. So there are other things to consider when um um when when he, when we are discussing hearing loss. So that includes the the status of the cochlea or the inner ear and the nerve. So there are different types of hearing loss. So you have sensory neural and conductive or a mixture of both. So conductive is there is a problem in the conduction of sound from the outside of the body to the to the oval window or to the inner ear. So that includes there is a fluid in the ear canal or there's a fluid in the middle ear. If there is a foreign object like naiwan na cotton sa tenga natin, if you have allergies or if you have a ruptured eardrum or if you have impacted cerumen, you can have conductive hearing left. He hearing loss. And most of the time, this is reversible. We can also have sensory neural, meaning that the cochlea or the nerve is affected. Most common cause, aging, noise damage, if you have um, occupational causes, perhaps, drug side effects, auditory tumors, and exposure to blast or explo explosion. And we can have mixed causes, meaning we have conductive and sensory neural causes in one condition. So that includes genetic disorders, infections, and head trauma. So how many of you have hearing loss? So I, perhaps there may be more than one of us who have hearing loss, but not all of us will be aware. Or maybe you, you have hearing loss, but you are not aware that you have hearing loss. Okay? So our hearing is not linear, meaning it is not just the presence or absence of the ability to hear. So much like how in vision, there is such a thing as grading or yung grado ng mata, it is also applicable for hearing. So when you get a hearing test, they will most likely put out a result like this one. May nakasulat doon. Mild hearing loss, moderate sensory neural hearing loss, severe hearing loss, profound hearing loss. Okay. So one interesting part of hearing is, again, it is not linear. So you may have normal hearing in some frequencies and hearing loss in higher frequencies. Meaning, pwede tayong nag-uusap. We are talking, nagkakarinigan tayo. But for the high, higher pitch, hindi nyo siya naririnig. Okay? For lower pitch, okay ka. But for the uh, high frequencies, like female voices, babies crying, or yung certain words like S, 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 yung mga silent words, Meron kayong magiging problem doon. Okay? 
So a person with severe or profound hearing loss uh, in both ears is often called deaf. But a person with less severe hearing loss is often referred to as hard of hearing. Sa atin kasi, bingi lang ang tawag natin. Pero actually, meron silang pinagkaiba. Okay. Babies and children need to be able to hear the sounds of speech so they can develop listening and spoken language skills. So, hearing loss can be addressed through systematic screening to identify hearing loss early in children, preschool and school age children. That is why in certain schools, meron na silang hearing screening for as, er as early as, I think, five years old. Okay, uh, entry level for schools. For newborn babies and infants, we have the newborn hearing screening, usually done ideally bago umuwi yung bata. People exposed to noise or chemicals at work, so occupational hazards, and people receiving autotoxic medicines. Example niyan, yung mga for anti-tuberculosis medications and for chemotherapy. And then, older adults, or what we call presbycusis. Okay, so let's start with this. So what is the impact of hearing loss in babies? So Jenny was born deaf and she has severe hearing loss in both ears. Since she has not had a hearing test, her, her, parent, her parents are unaware that she has a hearing loss. All right? For example, hindi pina newborn hearing screening or pina newborn hearing screening man hindi kinuha yung result. So they are not aware. Madedetect nila yan. Pag mga 2 years old or 3 years old na si Jenny, kasi hindi nagsasalita. Right? Let's go to the second case, kay Patrick. So, Patrick naman is a 6-year-old kid studying in the second grade. So, due to repeated ear infections, Patrick has a moderate hearing loss in both ears. He can hear but often misses out syllables and words. Okay? So, school age si Patrick. Okay? So, children need good communication to learn well in school and fully grasp what is going on around them. So, usually kapag mga children na ganito, school age, meron, uh, what we can see is poor yung attention nila sa class, poor yung grades nila. Okay? Kasi hindi nila naririnig yung lecture ng, ng teachers nila. Okay? So, sometimes the teachers may feel as if um, Patrick is not interested in the lessons or is being difficult. Pag uwi naman sa bahay, nahihirapan siyang intindihin yung pinapanood niya. Hindi siya tumitingin doon sa parents niya. Okay? And if it's left untreated, maglalag talaga siya sa school. So look at, let's go to Lola naman, Lola Malika. So she is a 70-year-old female who lives with her family. And she has hearing loss and finds it difficult to understand what her children are saying. Especially when they are all speaking together or when there is music playing. So this is very typical of high frequency losses or yung mga matitinis or yung press by courses. Okay? They are unable to hear. They are able to hear certain words pero hindi nila naiintindihan. Okay? And they are also, they also find it difficult to hear kapag sabay-sabay nagsasalita or in churches or in restaurants. Okay? As you can see from the three cases, we have different ages, all with hearing loss, all with tremendous impact in their lives. Okay? So, what will happen if we do not address hearing loss? Okay? Communication and speech will be affected. So, cognition, yung understanding, yung learning ng bata sa school will be impacted. Okay? Education and employment. So, children with hearing loss and deafness often do not receive schooling. Okay? Pag nakita na hindi talaga nagsasalita yung bata, hindi na ipapasok ng magulang yan sa school. Sa bahay na lang sila. Ilalapit nila kapag older na, perhaps. And then, by that time, there's no there's not much we can do anymore. Okay? Some, and if ever, adults na sila with hearing loss, um, they have much higher unemployment rate. Mahirap makahanap ng trabaho if you have hearing loss. This is very common among our patients. Um, usually, nire-reject sila if they have hearing loss. Among those who are employed, like say, they are very fortunate na nakahanap sila ng work, but they will have lower grades of employment compared with the general workforce. And madalas, hindi yung high-ranking work yung bibigay sa kanila. And most importantly, people with hearing loss feel isolated, they feel lonely, and they fear the stigma. 
Okay? Sila lolo, sila, this is common among the elderly. Sila lolo, sila lola, because they have hearing loss, feeling nila hindi sila kasama sa conversation natin. Lalo na ngayon na lahat tayo nakamask, they cannot read our lips. So they, re- they really find it difficult to understand what we are talking about. They feel lonely kasi feeling nila they are not included in our conversations. And there is this stigma. Bingi kasi yan. Diba? Anong ginagawa sa, sa bingi? Sinisigawan. Okay? Of course, this is not, this does not, this is not positive. This does not have a positive effect on them. Okay? This is also the reason why a lot of our patients are afraid of wearing hearing aids. Takot silang masabihan na bingi kasi. Kaya naging hearing aid. Let's go to the causes of hearing loss. So the sense of hearing is a key aspect of functioning at all stages of life. Even bif- bago tayo pang anak, nagsistart na daw yan. Okay? And less appropriately, at least, it impacts society as a whole. So here we can see the numerous causes of hearing loss and when they typically occur. So the grayed out icons tells us how they can be typically prevented. So causative factors, we have genetics, autosclerosis, hypoxia during um, during birth, low birth weight, up to the last portion, age-related sensory neural degeneration in the elderly. Below, we can see the grayed out icons. So they can be prevented by maternal nutrition, avoiding sound, loud sounds, breastfeeding, maternal hygiene, good ear hygiene, protection against head or ear injury, healthy lifestyle, immunization, and good nutrition. So hearing loss may result from genetic causes, complications at birth, certain infectious diseases, chronic ear infections, exposure to loud sounds. This is very important and very uh, uh, pertinent at present. And use of autotoxic medicines and aging. So in children, almost 60% of their hearing loss is preventable. So imagine that. There is something that we can actually do. So over 1 billion young adults are at risk of permanent avoidable hearing loss due to unsafe listening practices. Yung mga mahilig mag-headset, mag-earphones because of our online classes, of our meetings, music, etc. Of those who could benefit with the use of hearing aid, like I said, there are a lot of people who can benefit from hearing aids. Only 17% actually use one because of the stigma, because of the prohibitive costs of hearing aids, and among other reasons. Okay. So although these factors can be encountered at different periods across the lifespan, individuals are most susceptible to their effects during cr- critical periods in life. So prenatal period, genetic or intrauterine problems, perinatal period, birth asphyxia, hyperbilirubinemia, low birth weight, and others. So these are actually considered higher risk. So if you're familiar with the newborn hearing um, card, kasama siya sa checklist. And during childhood and adolescence, ear infections and fluid in the ear. And during adulthood and older age, you have chronic diseases like diabetes. That can cause hearing loss. Smoking. Autosclerosis, age-related, so that is first by gusis, and sudden hearing loss. Sudden hearing loss, sometimes they, they attribute it to viral infections, vascular problems. But hearing loss across all ages can be because of impacted serumin, trauma to the ear or head, loud no- noises or loud sounds, autotoxic medications, work-related chemicals, nutritional deficiencies, viral infections, and delayed onset or progressive genetic hearing loss. Let's go to hearing loss in children. So as children grow, there are several developmental milestones that should be met. So in terms of hearing, these should be performed by children by the certain indicated age. So if not at par with age, it may mean delay or hearing loss. So by um, three months, the child should be observed to be responding to loud sounds, blinks in response to a bang, wakes up when there is a sudden noise near him. Okay? By three to six months, the child moves her or his eyes in the direction of the sounds and responds to changes in the mother's tone of voice. And they also notice the toys that make sound. Okay? Six to 12 months, turns and looks in the direction of sounds, turns when someone calls her or his name and understands words for common items like water, daddy, mommy. Okay. By around two years, they respond to his or her own name. 
they start speaking small words like mama, baba, dada, and tries to imitate, imitate words which she or he commonly hears. By three years, they follow two-part directions like get the spoon and put it on the table and they understand new words quickly and they put three words together to talk about things. Three years and older, they respond when called from another room and they follow longer directions like put your pajamas on, brush your teeth, and they then pick up a book. Okay, It's important to note then that sometimes hearing loss is undetected because only one ear is affected. Okay, I have several patients who have who have undetected hearing loss. Malalaman lang nila high school na sila or college because they think for for the for the person yun yun normal sa kanila. Hindi nila alam ano ang feeling na magkaroon ng dalawang sa tenga na nakakarinig. Bakit siya nagiging undetected? Because when you call the child, dilingon pa rin yan because one ear is still working. Okay, so that is the importance of doing hearing test or screening. So when will you suspect hearing loss? So in babies and infants, problems during pregnancy can cause problems with the growth and development of a body's baby's hearing. So this can cause a baby to be born with hearing loss or develop, develop a hearing loss soon after birth. And hearing loss inherited directly or indirectly from parents can cause uh, hearing loss. Premature birth and or low birth weight, birthing difficulties, infectious infections in uh, during pregnancy, use of certain medicines that damage hearing, jaundice, especially when it is not needed. Remember that many babies and children with hearing loss may have no obvious cause. So, hindi siya always explained by, by maternal history or something na nakikita natin. So, for this reason, it is important to screen all babies for hearing loss soon after birth. Okay? So, dyan papasok yung ating newborn hearing screening. Okay. With newborn hearing screening, question, so is it possible to get a normal result in newborn hearing screening and then the, the baby will develop hearing loss later on? Yes. That is why the developmental milestones is very important. So, so when do we suspect hearing loss in a baby? So, if the baby has any of the risk factors previously mentioned, or if they are not responding to sounds, or if they are not startled by loud sounds like loud bang close to them. Okay? And again, these are the possible causes of hearing loss. When do we suspect hearing loss in a child? So if they have delayed speech. So one of the um, reasons for referral to, uh, to ENTs sa mga childhood uh, so mga around five years old is or three or four years old is if delayed yung speech, hindi pa nagsasalita. So they usually request for hearing tests. So the child often asks us to repeat what we say with what we say. They turn up the volume of the television or they have trouble hearing what is being said over the phone or over the phone. So some of them perform poorly in school or has behavioral problems and the child has any feature suggesting an ear infection. Okay. Some, some people believe na parang yung ear discharge o yung pagtutulong ng tenga part of growing up. But it is not. Lahat na nagtutulong ng tenga or lahat na merong ear discharge, it is abnormal. And you should see an ENT or a doctor to address that. Okay. Also, remember, do not attempt to remove earwax or foreign bodies at Home because this may cause damage to the ear. So bring your baby to the hospital. So what can be done if a child is diagnosed with hearing loss? So once hearing loss is identified, its management must be discussed and started at the earliest possible time. So this would allow the child to develop language skills, gain education, and can be socially integrated. And ear diseases can get diagnosed and treated so that hearing loss and other complications are avoided. Question, pwede po ba na mag-hearing aid na ang bata, ang baby? Yes. We have this 136. So by the, parang rule. So by the first month, dapat na hearing screening na si baby. Here. So by the third month after birth, there should be also already a diagnosis. So na 
um, dapat na EBR na siya. So, then you've already confirmed the diagnosis of hearing loss. And by the six month, there is already intervention. So, either maglalagay tayo ng hearing aid or implants can be used. We can do rehabilitation, which which can include oral rehab, speech and language therapy. This is very important. We should refer to speech pathologists. Okay, counseling and peer group support for the child and the family. Families, careers, and teachers they should support the child in rehab and use of hearing aids or cochlear implants. And if necessary, learn sign language. What can we do in case of ear diseases? So they must be referred to doctors or ENTs for examination and diagnosis. Remember, do not self-medicate. Okay? Because some eardrops or some medications are not appropriate for all causes. Okay? Treatment will depend on the nature of the disease and may include medical treatment or surgery. Treating the ear disease early may prevent or reverse any hearing loss it, have caused, it has caused. So we should suspect ear disease in cases of ear pain, ear discharge, heaviness in the ear, ringing or what we call tinnitus, and difficulty in hearing. How do we use eardrops? So when your doctor prescribes eardrops to you, you should lie down on your side, gently pull the earlobe back, drop two to three um, drops of the medication into the ear canal, use the tragus to pump the medication inside, and then let it stay for around five minutes. Let's go to hearing loss in adults. So these are the common causes of hearing loss in adults. So loud sound. So prolonged noise exposure from working in noisy places. So this is very common sa mga construction sites, yung mga mechanical work. So listening to loud music through headphones, earphones, or in places such as discos. Single exposures to high-intensity sound like a blast or an explosion. Medicines that can damage hearings like certain antibiotics, anti-malarials, anti-cancer medic medicines, and injectables for drug-resistant TB. So this is also the reason why we are advocating hearing tests, hearing tests or hearing screening before giving chemotherapeutic medications, anti-TB meds, so that the patient will have a baseline hearing level. So we can actually monitor if merong um, adverse effect or adverse problems yung medication na binibigay sa kanila. Injury to the ear or the ears can also cause hearing loss, untreated prolonged ear infections, age-related hearing loss, ear diseases indicated by recurrence or per persistent ear discharge or pain. So this represents the different noise levels. So what does this mean? Meron kasi tayong tiyatawag na decibel. So it's... In simple words, in simple words, it's this volume. Okay, so if the volume is around fifty-five, it is generally safe. It's it. Ang katumbas niyan is yung conversation. When we are talking, it's around fifty-five to sixty decibels. But when you're using, for example, the vacuum cleaner, that is already eighty-five decibels, and you can only listen to it for eight hours before it starts causing damage. Okay, but for example, you are you are working in a construction site. Okay, so you're using an electric drill. When they're working, hindi yan one hour lang. Okay, usually two hours, three hours, or the entire day. And that will actually lead to hearing loss. Because it's 94 decibels and you are only allowed to listen to it for around an hour before it starts causing damage. Okay, tingnan niyo yung sports event or music concert. 120 decibels. So, nakalagay, how long can you listen without protection? Zero. So, you should always, always use ear protection. Okay. How does hearing loss occur? So, again, when you are exposed to loud sounds, the sound vibrations vibrates the eardrum and the tiny bones in the ear, which in turn vibrates the hair cells in the inner ear. So, when you are exposed to loud noises over time, they can permanently damage these hair cells, yung mga hair cells sa tingin natin na yan. Okay? So, when, the, when someone has hearing problems, when a person says, I asked Skip if he felt sick, hindi nila maririnig yung S. Kasi it's high pitch, it's high frequency. So, what they will hear is, a, a, e, a, e. It's ano, primarily vowels. 
Ito yung common doon sa mga elderly. Kaya, pag nagsalita, ha? Magagano sila. Narinig ka nila, pero hindi ka nila na- naiintindihan. Kasi merong mga words na na high pitch hindi nila na- narinig. So, what do you have to lose? Yan. A normal person, ito yung maririnig nila. Let's talk about a field of corn. If you have mild hearing loss, you may have difficulty hearing some speech and whispering. So, let's talk about field of court. Mar- maiintindihan pa rin nila, especially kapag nakatingin sila sa lips. Kasi ma- 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 figure out, ma-fill in the blocks nila kung ano yung sinabi mo. If someone has moderate hearing loss, they will have difficulty hearing in, in group conversation. So, yan na, medyo mas malabo na siya. Itong moderate hearing loss, obvious ito kapag we're talking to patients, tapos medyo difficult or to people and then medyo hirap na sila makaintindi. Minimum yun, moderate hearing loss. Severe hearing loss, there will be difficulty hearing TV or radio or person talking. So, almost hindi na nila naiintindahan. And then, you may also have tinnitus. I know a lot of people have this. Or yung ringing. Ringing or buzzing in the ears, it is more noticeable in quiet settings. Example, gabi. Kapag wala nagsasalita. Doon nila mas, doon mas nagiging prominent yung ringing ng tenga. How can you suspect hearing loss in an adult? They do not respond when called to or may respond inappropriately. They speak much louder than usual. Di ba? Sila lolo. Sila lolo. Ang lalakas ng boses nila. Why? Kasi hindi nila naririnig yung sarili nila. Okay? They have difficulty talking over the phone. Di ba? Nakikipagsigawan. Ayaw nagsiselfone. Naka loudspeaker sila. And most often, they become withdrawn, quiet, and isolated. They will not always admit this, pero majority of them, ito yung nararamdaman. Kasi feeling nila, they are not included in our conversation. Bawa dinner table, sabay-sabay kumakain, tapos nagtatawanan. Sometimes, feel nila sila yung pinagtatawanan. Okay? So, they sometimes turn up the volume to hear the TV or listen to music. They can hear but not always understand speech. They have difficulty in hearing high-frequency sounds. They can have tinnitus and they may have history of ear discharge. So again, what does tinnitus sound like? Parang buzzing daw. It's like running engine, metal grinding against metal, wind or fan, hissing or tea kettle, or fluorescent lights, or like ringing. Parang yeah. So what do we do for people with hearing loss? So we should encourage them to get their ears checked. They should undergo pure tone and speech audiometry, something we have in Qualimed. So those adults that have a smartphone can use the free Hear WHO. Hear who? So this is an application developed by WHO to screen for the hearing loss. So remember, this is just screening. Hindi to diagnostic. So if you're just curious kung meron kang hearing loss, use this. Pero if you're not using appropriate um, headphones or earphones, baka hindi accurate yung makuha natin yung result. So, if the person has a score below 50 on the hear who test, he or she must definitely get a hearing test without delay. I'm actually a strong advocate of getting hearing tests, even if you think your hearing is normal. Kasi, I want, it would be better if you have a baseline level. Okay? Uh, what I usually tell my patients for pre-employment, mas maganda na may hearing test ka. So, if anything happens to you, Meron kang proof. My hearing was normal before I engaged in this kind of work. So how is hearing tested? For newborn hearing screening, we use the autoacoustic emission. Okay, so it's OAE. If you want to diagnose or to be certain about the hearing loss, we do the ABR or the BAR or the BERA. It's the same. For adults, we use the pure tone audiometry, which with speech audiometry. So, usually, merong tone, tapos magpe-press ng button si patient kapag narinig nila yung tone. And it will give you a result if you have uh, mild, moderate, severe, profound, or normal hearing. So, what can be done if hearing loss or ear disease is identified in adult? So, it is important to identify the cause. And adults with hearing loss are likely to benefit from the use of devices like hearing aids. And adults also benefit from oral rehab and support to get maximum value from their hearing. Okay? So it is also important, like sa children, that the hearing loss be identified as early as possible and that rehab and use of devices is started without delay. Okay? A lot of people do not like hearing aids. 
Okay? Kasi daw, may negative stigma, pangit ang hearing aid. But technology is actually good now. Maraming, maraming hearing aid na hindi pansinin. Okay? But, and also for me, yung value ng, ng conversation, ng being part of conversation, is a lot greater than aesthetics. And ngayon, marami na rin naka-headset. And another thing I would like to point out is that wearing hearing aids, kasi maraming matanda. Matanda na ako, ayoko na mag-hearing aid. Maraming elderly, ay, or kahit mga working age adults, ayaw nag hearing aid kasi daw mahal, etc. Remember, pag, um, wearing hearing aids can actually delay dementia. Okay? Mas, nabab, mas na, de, na pipigilan niya ang pagiging ulyanin. Okay? Siguro in simple words, parang nasi-stimulate mo yung brain every time na meron kang na- naririnig. Parang ganun siya. So, we should support people with hearing loss. So, speak clearly and slowly. Do not shout. Kasi it distorts the words in our mouth. So, mas hindi nila naintindihan. So, we should stand in good lighting and face the person we are talking to. Do not exaggerate or distort lip movements as this might make it harder. Actually, we can try speaking in a lower frequency. Kasi for the elderly, higher frequency, hindi nila kaya. Kaya yung mga female voices, babies, hirap sila marinig. And we should try to keep background noise to a minimum. And we should always include them in conversations. So what can we do to support them? Encourage them to visit a clinic. Yeah. Um, support them in the use of hearing aids or implants. Teach children to self-advocate for their needs. Encourage people to be open about their hearing loss and not to be ashamed of it. We should always do this. Okay, wala kang dapat ikahiya, it's okay. And we should guide parents to inform teachers at school that their child's hearing lo- about their child's hearing loss. Okay? Remember that with the proper care and support, people with hearing loss can do everything except hear normally. Normal din sila. Hindi sila nakakarinig ng katulad ng normal person. So they must be included in all activities. Okay? So let's go here. So, which of these are safe to use for ear cleaning? So, nakalagay dito, baby cotton buds. Ito, marami akong pasyenteng maraming ganyan. The third one is available, I think, in Shopee, as well as the fourth one. Okay, so which do you think is, avail- is safe to use for ear cleaning? Okay, so it's actually a trick question. None of them are safe for, to use for ear cleaning. So, tingnan nyo nga yung baby cotton buds. For delicate areas around eyes or outer ear, Pag outer ear, hindi kasama si ear canal. Sila na mismo nagsabi nun. How about ear candling, Doc? Pwede po ba natin gamitin yan? Wala siyang, wala siyang actual benefit na ginagawa for us. So some patients would come in, Doc, kasi may nakita ako, nagtatangga daw niya yung wax. So this is a candle kasi. May wax talaga siya sa loob. And there have been instances na as, instead of taking out the wax daw, nagiiwan pa ng wax si ear candle. And at the same time, it's it's flame near your head. So parang it's a risk I'm not willing to take. Okay? So how should you clean your ears then? So remember that our ears are self-cleaning. We can, after taking a bath, you can just wipe wipe your outer ear with a cloth. Okay? So your outer ears can be cleaned with a little soap, water, or washcloth. Kung may pasok sa loob. Alright? Ear canals, kasi there is a safe amount of wax. And yung earwax that is formed inside is brought to the opening when we talk, when we chew. Okay, so you just have to wipe it out after taking a bath. Okay, so never insert a Q-tip or cotton swab in the ear because it can damage the ear canal or the tympanic membrane. So here, this is very pertinent. So is it bad to use earphones? So one out of two young people are at risk of hearing loss due to unsafe listening. So listening to loud music is unsafe. Okay, regularly listening to music or other audio content at high volume through personal audio devices and being exposed to loud sounds in nightclubs, etc. Yung mga, well, nakara- kar- naranasan din naman natin ito, naka-headset as matutulog. So that can actually damage your hearing. So remember, noise-induced hearing loss is permanent. Paano po yung hearing aid? Remember, hearing aids are just aids. They are not cures. Hindi sila hearing cure. They are hearing aids. They will amplify your hearing while you are using them. Pero pag tinanggal, wala na. And, but ang good thing is noise-induced hearing loss can be prevented. 
So remember, adopt these simple li- listening behaviors. Keep the volume down, less than 60% of the maximum. Most of our phones have this level na or parang warning if you're going beyond the acceptable limit. Okay? We should protect our ears from loud sounds, wear earplugs in noisy b- venues, limit the time spent engaged in noisy activities. If mag expose ka sa loud sounds, mag- take a break. Okay? Ipahinga niyo yung tenga niyo for around 5 minutes. Okay? And you can also monitor listening level. So, meron yan sa sa Apple Watch, sa, sa phone natin. You can download it either Android or uh, iOS sound level meter. Makukuha niyo kung ilang decibels yung noise na nandun sa, sa particular location. So, recently, our society came out with uh, came up with this one. Proper ear care for online activities. Okay, so I told you graph natin that conversational speech is around 60 decibels. Okay, so we should choose our hearing devices, keep our earpieces clean, linisen, alcohol or whatever. Basta clean, clean it regularly kasi it will, it may cause infection in your ear canal. We should work in a quiet environment, keep it low and know our limits, and we should dress our ears. Okay, so in summary, I'm nearly done. So effective intervention for hearing loss starts by systematic screening of newborn, preschool, people exposed to no- noise and chemicals, people using autotoxic medicines, and older adults. And there should be timely and appropriate care, which would ensure people with ear diseases and hearing loss can achieve their full potential. So medicines and surgery, uh, hearing aids and implants, rehab, sign language access, assistive technology, and captioning services. And we should provide universal access to ear and hearing care using hearing package, hearing screening, ear disease prevention and management, access to technology, rehab, improved communication, noise reduction, and greater community engagement. And all of these, all of us, babies, children, older adults, um, people exposed to medications and sounds should have their ears checked. Okay. So I think we've already discussed this. Care for the ears and do's. So this is just a summary. Remember, don't put anything in your ear. No cotton buds, no clips, no toothpick, no palito, no anything. Okay, yung kutsara, bawal din po yun. Don't ignore an ear that has any pus or fluid coming out of it. Don't treat any ear conditions with hot or cold oil, herbal, or home remedies. I have a lot of patients, several, hindi naman lot, may merong bawang, may dalagay na luya, may wash in dirty water, and don't listen to very loud noises or music for long periods as this can cause hearing loss. And lastly, make your listening safe. Ito, itong egg na to, na naka-headphones. Because once you lose your hearing, it won't come back. So these are my references, and thank you for listening. Okay, thank you, Dr. Melanie Grace, and I'm um, for that wonderful presentation. And while I am listening, talaga nililaan ko yung volume. Okay, that is really substantial na discussion. Okay, so now we will now proceed to our Q and A or live forum portion. So if you have any questions, you may now send your your inquiries and to our chat boxes. If you are listening via Zoom, okay, kindly send your question via chat box in the control panel. And if you are watching via Facebook Live, okay, kindly send your questions by commenting your um, questions. Okay, so for our first question, Dr. Uh, Dr. Amel, um, this is from Ao. Okay. Um, as you mentioned, our ears are self-limiting. But what about for people who have hard earwax? Um, how do you how do they take care of their ears? There are two types of wax formers: those with wet and those with dry earwaxes. So if you are the um dry type, you can actually try just wiping out the external or the outer part of your ear. Or some would advocate putting in, putting in a little bit of oil. But what I usually advise my patients is, particularly if they have recurrent or paulit-ulit na yung nagbabara yung tenga niya, is to just visit an ENT. And we will take it out for you. Okay? Rather than do it yourself, 
in the most damage to the ear canal and um, possibly pushing in the the serum in. Okay, thank you, Doc. Okay, um, we have another question here from a friend. Okay, um, ang sabi niya, I only miss usually a word or two occasionally. Um, do you think, Doc, I have a hearing loss? I need that. Sorry. Okay, Doc. Um, this is a question from a friend. Um, his question is usually, Doc, um, I miss a word or two occasionally. Um, do you think, Doc, I have a hearing loss? Okay, for that. For that, I would suggest that you undergo hearing test. So there are usually two to three parts of our usual hearing test. One is the pure tone. So ang maririnig yun is tut, and when you hear it, it press. And the other part of that is may magsasalita. And then you are you will be asked to repeat the word. Tapos and then pag narepeat mo, may scoring system yun. So that is actually a good measure para malaman yun if you have hearing loss. Okay, pero generally speaking, if one or two words, apat hindi, pero we cannot really say for certain if okay siya without the test. Okay, thank you, Doc. We have another question here from Dr. Uh, Dr. Varela. Um, I constantly have itchy ear canal, but wherever I look at it through the device attached to a um, to a monitor, it is actually clean. So yes. what I do is I pour in baby oil. Is that okay? Okay. This is a very common complaint talaga, yung ear, itchy ears. And not just because of allergies. So if you have allergies, pag kumati yung ilong, kumati yung mata, kumati yung soft palate, minsan kumakati rin yung tenga. So that is one. Number two is, it happens because ang hilig natin maglinis ng tenga. Majority of the time, kaya tayo naglilinis ng tenga is because of habit. Parang kulang, parang kulang yung paliligo natin kapag hindi tayo nagko-cotton buds. And masarap din siya. So this act, act can actually dry out the ear canal. Kasi we're taking out the wax. So pag tinanggal natin yung wax, parang sa balat, kapag walang lotion or pag walang moisture, magda-dry. Pag nag-dry, kakate. So cotton buds tayo. So nagiging parang vicious cycle siya. If a couple of drops of oil benefits you, it's okay. Ang thing ko lang with oil kasi, minsan pag tumikit siya sa eardrum, hindi siya harmful, pero pag tumikit siya sa eardrum, para nagbabago yung hearing. Para yeah, nang higing yung dampen siya. Correct. Right. Okay. <laughs> but usually, hindi siya dapat magkakos ng harm. Just to make, pero kasi sinabi, sinabi niya na nasisilip niya. So I'm assuming na buo yung eardrum niya. So before you do it, dapat sure muna kayo na buo yung eardrum ninyo. Okay, another question here, Doc. Um, it says, it's summertime. Any tips if you go swimming and water is stuck in your ears? Okay. Um, hindi po totoo. Yung pag may water ka dito, susunduin mo yung tubig sa kabila. Kasi yun yung turo sa amin nung, nung kapitbahay namin nung bata. <laughs> hindi po yung totoo. Wag, meron din pinupukpok. Wag din. Um, if you cannot visit your doctor, what you can do is try na maglagay ng blower. Pero huwag yung mainit, yung may cold air na blower. And see, malayo, malayo sa head. See if it can dry it out. Okay? Um, dapat din, ideally, sure kayo na hindi butas yung eardrum nyo. Now, if you are sure na hindi butas yung eardrum ninyo, um, pwede kayong... Pero hindi ko siya masyadong ina-advocate kasi pwedeng mabutas yung eardrum. So yung tissue na tissue na medyo matibay, i-roll din yun. Mer meron, meron kasi training doon kung paano siya ginagawa. And then put it dito lang sa may bungad. Tapos parang i-allow mo lang na i-absorb siya. Hindi mo siya ipupush sa loob. yon Pero definitely don't use cotton buds kasi... Pag matagal sa water, nababad yung ear canal, lalambot yung balat. When you use the cotton buds or yung kutsara, mas madali natin masusugatan yung ear canal. Yun yung tinatawag natin, otitis externa, pag nagkaroon siya na infection. Okay. Thank you, Doc. Um, another question here. Um, air travel involves rapid pressure in air, uh, in air pressure. Uh, particularly during takeoff and landing, what are the techniques you may suggest, Doc, to relieve this pressure? Okay. That's a good question because it's really 
common, not just for air travel. So, madalas may mga patients ay magko-complain mag, na may earfulness, parang puno, pero wala silang recent history ng travel. Okay? So, similar yan. So, what I usually tell them is, pwede tayong mag-medicate, bigay tayo na anti-allergies or decongestants if there is decongestion. If wala, mag- um, what we call valsalva, yung hahawak sa ilok tapos parang mag-blow out ng air. Or you can drink water, okay? What happens kasi with this is, um, meron kasing connection yung ating ears saka yung back ng nose. So this is what we call the eustachian tube. Kapag halimbawa na doon tayo sa higher altitude, laser yung pressure sa outside ng body natin, ideally, dapat mag, um, when we swallow, mag-open si eustachian tube to, op- to equalize the pressure. Now, if closed siya, nagiging full yung thing. So, ang kailangan lang natin gawin is to open it by swallowing or drinking water or doing the balsalva. Okay, Doc. Thank you. Um, another question here from um, Miss Day. Um, Doc, ang sabi po sa amin dati, pag nilagyan ng tubig sa tenga, Sundan ng patak ng rubbing alcohol. Been doing this since college days and it has always worked for me. Masama po ba ito kung bihira lang naman gawin? Thanks. Oh, as your doctor, my official answer is don't put alcohol inside your ear. Okay? Pero, I, I, um, I can imagine bakit siya mag-work kasi mas mabilis mag-evaporate yung alcohol. Ang problem lang natin dyan is if may sugat or if butas yung eardrum mo. Eh, or if baka... We don't know yung concentration ng alcohol. Pwede siya makadavage doon. So, um, just make sure. Ako, kasi hindi ako fan ng paglalagay ng alcohol din talaga sa tenga. So, um, basta make sure na you're safe, I guess. And siguro ang best option talaga dati dyan is, if ever it happens, puta kayo sa doctor ninyo to have it checked. Okay. Thanks, Doc. Another question here. Normal po ba na may time parang may buzz sound and minsan parang yung alam mo yung pag napasukan ng tubig ang tenga na pakiramdam, may time lang naman po at left side lang naman ng tenga po. Um, good question po. Yung buzzing na yun, kasi it's not a sound na, that is actually present. It's what we call tinnitus. If minsanan lang, okay lang. Mas bothersome yung tinnitus na continuous tapos hindi nawawala. Yung continuous tapos ang tagal-tagal hindi nawawala. For for the longest time hindi siya nawawala. That is more bothersome. If yung earfulness na parang 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 puno yung tenga tapos nakita natin na there's nothing wrong. That could be you taken to this function. One of the consideration would be you taken to this function. So if it persists, ibig sabihin ang tagal-tagal na ganun pa din siya. Visit your doctor to have it checked out. Kasi importante na makita natin yung tenga mismo or yung eardrops. Okay. Thanks, Doc. Another question from our nursing uh, nurse training manager, Michelle. Hi, good morning. I encounter instances where in, oops, okay, kids experience insects getting in their ears and I noticed their parents pouring drops of oil and or water on their ear canal has as a notion that this is the applicable first aid. What is the best and most appropriate management for this? Okay, this is actually a good question then. Kasi yung foreign bodies dun sa tenga is something na kailangan mo talagang dalhin sa, sa doctor. Do not attempt to remove it at home. Yung insects... Oh, makinig na lang kayo it's, dito. It's real. It, it, it's real. It's true. Naga, uh, lalo na kapag buhay, mga oh, ipis. Mayroon kami mga patients na pinapasukan ng ipis sa tenga. Nagpapalagay kami ng baby oil doon sa tenga para mag-stop yung, parang, in a way, parang mamatay yung ipis or mamatay yung insect tapos mag-stop na sila ng move, movement. Okay? And then after that, yung next step kasi is you have to bring the person to a doctor, to an ED2 to, to have it removed. Hindi mo siya pwedeng tanggalin sa bahay. Okay. Ang reason behind it is mas kompleto kami ng gamit. So we have suctions, we have irrigate, we can irrigate, we have alligators, we can take it out. Unlike pag halimbawa sa bahay, pag nagsugat yung ear canal, nag, nagsara na yung ear canal na gano'n, mas mahihirapan tayo i-handle yun. So first aid, yes, you can put in baby oil para lang ma-relieve yung 
pain and yung discomfort nung pinasukan na insect sa tenga. Okay. Thanks, Doc. Another question here. Um, okay lang po ba na kapag may ear infection, linisan yung ears using peroxide na diluted to water? Okay. It really depends, I, I guess, dun sa type of infection na okay. meron ka. Mas malinong pa. Okay. It really depends. Kasi oh. if putas yung eardrum mo, I, hindi ko ipupush yung peroxide doon sa loob. And kapag external canal naman yung problem, mas gusto natin na mayroong kahit pa paano mayroong antibiotics or mayroong steroid yung ibibigay natin. Now, if constant tayo na para nagiging habit na lang gumagamit tayo ng peroxide, it can alter the pH or yung parang acidity ng ear canal natin and it can actually lead to other problems. Perhaps yung fungal infection sa tenga natin. So, hindi lagi. Meron lang, sir, I think for impacted serum, it's something you can do. But again, kailangan nyo dalhin sa ENT nyo after. Okay, thanks, Doc. Another question. Okay, maybe we could have at least three questions to go. Okay, another question here. Currently, there is an aversion to going to clinics and hospitals because of fear of COVID. Can you consult a doctor through online if you have an ear problem? Um, actually, yes. You can consult a doctor online for ear problems. Ang problem lang dun sa ganun is hindi namin nakikita yung tainga. So, minsan, nagbe-base kami sa symptoms. Meron ka bang fever? Masakit ba yung tenga mo? Pag pinipress mo ba to Masakit? Kailan pa yan? Nikulani ka ba? So, pag nag-iisip kami ng infection, we will give you antibiotics. If tutuli yan, wala talaga tayong magagawa to take it out. You really have, siguro advice na namin kayo na maglagay ng ceremonialitic or ear, earwax softeners before coming into the clinic. Um, Maraming ang takot pumunta sa hospital, pero ako personally, syempre, hindi ako masyadong, mas, I feel safer sa hospital kesa sa other public areas. Kasi sa hospital, paraning lahat ng tao. Bago ka pa pumasok, di ba ilang beses ka kukuha ng temperature, lahat ng staff, nakamas, nakaka-face shield. Pag nakita nyo kami sa clinic, balot na balot kami. So, meron pa kaming katabi ng mga air purifier. So, I really feel safer sa hospital rather than and saka hospitals have protocols kasi hindi nila minimix yung mga covid suspects with the general general population of patients so if really pressing yung concern mas maganda siguro na we bring them to the hospital okay thanks doc second to the last question from miss uh team um what could be the cure for tinnitus all right that's that's a really interesting din yung tinnitus na yan. Kasi, um, first, we should identify muna bakit mayroong tinnitus. And majority of the time, kapartner ni tinnitus si hearing loss. Okay? Kadalasan, high-frequency hearing loss. If if mapapansin nyo, if you have tinnitus and it's continuous, mas prominent yan sa gabi or pagtahimik. Okay? So, ang first step natin dyan is to get a hearing test to identify hearing loss. Now, if you have hearing loss, tapos walang ibang problem, we can try hearing aids. Kumbaga, kaya ka nagkakaroon ng, or ba, kaya nagiging prominent yung tinnitus, kasi mahina yung pandinig mo. Nangingibabaw yung parang nakakabinging katahimikan, parang gano'n, nangingibabaw yung, yung, doot, yun. so, pag nag-inamplify natin yung hearing mo, matatabunan nyo na yung uko. Okay? There are other causes of tinnitus, pero a hearing test is the first step. Okay, thanks, Doc. Another question from Facebook. Okay, hello, Doc. Um, would there be a future problem if I was diagnosed to have a flat eardrum? I usually hear ringing sound on my left ear. I am always being pleased that I am deaf, but because I I hear differently from what they actually say. Okay, first, put a flat eardrum. I'm assuming that you had an ear infection as a child or before tapos nagsara na yung eardrum. Okay? So, minsan kasi, pag nagbutas yung eardrum, tapos naalagaan ng doktor ninyo, tapos dry siya, inalagaan nyo din, pwede siya magsara. So, yun yung naiisip ko na sinabihan ka na flat eardrum. Although, better pa rin syempre is if makita ka. And then, with, regarding dun sa tinutokso, kahayaan mo yung mga tinutokso, nanunokso sa'yo, 
Pero best yan kung magpa-hearing test ka para ma-identify yung specific problem if there is something that can be done sa hearing mo or magbe-benefit ka ba sa hearing aid. Okay, sige dok. Uh, ito last na na question, pahabol na lang. Doktor, ask lang po, may napapansin ako kapag may pasyente akong sinisipon po. Madalas sinasabi nila na may lumalabas na discharge sa tenga nila. Yun po ba ay dahil lang sa sipon o may problema po sa tenga? Dahil po yung sa sipon at dahil may problema sa tenga. Okay, so good observation po yan. Laging tandaan, hindi magtutulo ang, kung may sipon ka, hindi tutulo yung sa tenga kung hindi butas yung eardrum. Okay? So, madalas po kapag ganyan, meron ding butas yung tenga unless meron lang siyang middle ear infection. Now, if paulit-ulit lang siya tapos parang sipon din yung lumalabas nun sa tenga niya, kailangan nilang dalhin kasi kailangan niya ma-manage yung kailangan malinis, kailangan mabigyan ng antibiotics, kailangan ma-manage yung uh, ear problem ni patient bago mas lumala. Okay? Alam niyo yung typical na sinasabi natin, yung ear infection natin, pwedeng umabot sa utak, pwedeng mag-cause ng hilo, pwedeng mag-cause ng facial paralysis kasi very delicate yung area ng tenga natin. So, good observation po yun sa mga patients ninyo. Okay. So, thank you, Doc Mel, ayan, for sharing your thoughts and really accommodating our questions. Though we have limited time, um, sa mga nanonood po, we can now um, endorse Okay, your questions to our clinic. Um, Sir Ryan, next slide, please. Okay, so you may visit uh, Dr. Mel okay, during her clinic okay, days here at, at Qualimed San Jose del Monte. So her clinic is open every Wednesday okay, at 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. and every Friday at 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. So you may contact the contact details uh, flashed in your screens. So, yan po ang ating contact number na ating doctor's clinic. So, again, thank you po, Dr. Melanie, for um, having you today okay, and having a good discussion with us. Okay. Hey, thank you. Okay. Okay, so, Luben, kumusta ka dyan? Ito, um, sobrang nag-take down notes talaga ako sa mga dinis-discuss ni Doc Mel kasi syempre, um, yung nga na-mention ni doctor na talagang once na damage na palang ating tenga, hindi na talaga ito mababalik pa. So, it's very important na ngayon pa lang na mag-ingat talaga tayo. So, thank you talaga, Doc Mel, for all your tips. And hopefully, nakatulong talaga to sa ating mga guests ngayon na nanonood. Yeah. Okay, so... For our next um, discussion, okay, for our next topic, okay, so Ryan, next slide, please, okay, so we will now proceed to our next topic and to introduce our next presenter, okay, okay. so in celebration of National Women's Month, we invited one of our visiting consultant, she is a doctor of medicine from Pamantasa ng Lungsod ng Maynila, and she had her residency training of obstetrics and gynecology at our Lady of Lourdes Hospital and took her Obigayne Ultrasound Fellowship at St. Luke's Medical Center. She is now a fellow of Philippine Obstetrical and Gynecological Society Foundation. Our next speaker, may we call on Dr. Pamela Ann Barella. Hi, Doc. You're on mute, Doc. Hi, good morning. Good morning, Doc. <laughs> okay, galing sa hearing loss. Akala nyo may hearing loss kayo. Naka-mute lang pala ako. Okay. So, I'll share my screen for my slides po. Uh, Wait lang po ah. Bakit ayaw? I think uh, they have my, the copy naman of my slides. Baka yung venture. Hindi ko siya ma-share from my ano. Okay. Um, so Ryan, I think you have so your... We use that one okay. lang. So hindi ko siya ma-share. Yeah. So, um, good morning, everybody. So, 
Thank you for that wonderful introduction. Again, I'm Dr. Pamela Ann Varela. No, my colleagues and my patients call me Dr. Pam. Um, I'm, a, I'm an obstetrician, gynecologist. I'm also a sonologist. And I'm here to talk about a very timely topic, no, which is pregnancy during the pandemic. So um, this is a very difficult time for both our pregnant patients and also for us obstetricians. So it's it's good to have this lecture to somehow guide our patients and our obstetricians as well on what to do you know, for our pregnant patients during this pandemic. Next slide, please. Yeah, and so just to, to, to review, you know, last year, 2020, COVID-19 was declared by the World Health Organization as a global pandemic. So in our country, you no, know, in March 2020, um, doon tayo nag-start mag-lockdown, so nagkaroon ng restrictions, na declare yung ECQ and all that. So syempre, um, there were changes talaga in, in the protocols and guidelines no, with regards to pregnancy, labor and delivery, and as well as postpartum care. Next slide, please. Yan. So one of the most vulnerable sectors of our society amidst this pandemic is, of course, our pregnant patients. So as it is, no, pregnancy is a very difficult time to go through no, with all the changes occurring in a woman's body. Very difficult talaga for them to undergo pregnancy. Tapos, they're in this pandemic pa where there are many restrictions. And syempre, there's that anxiety and fear of getting the, the virus. So it's very difficult for our pregnant patients. And... We have to remember that pregnancy is a is an immunocompromised state. So very prone talaga yung pregnant patients natin to contract the the, the corona the COVID uh, virus or the COVID disease. So it's very important for us no to follow certain guidelines and protocols to to limit the possibility of infection for our pregnant patients. Next slide, please. Yeah, next slide, please. Yeah. So, um, taking all these into consideration, um, the Philippine Obstetrical and Gynecological Society, or, or POGS, which is our mother society, as well as the uh, component societies, the Philippine Society for Maternal Fetal Medicine, and the PISOOG, or the Philippine Society of Ultrasound and Obstetrics and Gynecology, um, devised certain guidelines no, to help us specifically no, um, to, to, to guide the sonologists, the perinatologists as well as the general obstetricians on what to do you know, regarding in terms of prenatal care, um, intrapartum care, and postpartum care for our pregnant patients. This will also help um, our patients and you know, guide our patients on what to expect. So my lecture would primarily be lifted from the guidelines drafted by these societies. But I made it simpler, you know, so hindi na ako mag-focus on the specific um, management, medication, because we will reserve that for our obstetricians. So what I will discuss basically is what the patients will expect and what changes you know, they, they will see in terms of the um, setup in the delivery room, in the labor room, as well as in the wards when they when they finally deliver their babies. So next slide, please. So the objectives of the guidelines drafted by these societies is number one, of course, to reduce transmission because um, the, the healthcare workers, if not um, guided properly on what they should do when they are in the labor, labor room or the delivery room, they can be the source of infection for our patients. So that is what we want to prevent. So na, na, pina stay at home natin yung mga pregnant patients natin the entire duration of their pregnancy. Tapos hindi naman maingat yung hospitals and doctors. no Sa hospital, baka dun pa makakuha ng ng COVID yung mga patients. So that is what we are trying to prevent. Another thing is to provide care for those who are positive. So this is a new disease. This is a new virus that we are dealing with. So lahat kami, no? lahat kami ngayon pa lang din kami um, natututo on what to do exactly for, for patients who are already positive. So ang hirap na, pregnant na nga yung patient tapos COVID positive pa. Especially pag um, moderate to severe disease. So very difficult no, for us if we don't have guidelines to help us. Lastly, to provide continuing care for those not afflicted with the virus. So, syempre, hindi naman tayo mag-focus lang to those who are positive, but also to those who are not positive. How can we um, prevent them getting infected and how do we ensure that they still have a healthy and safe pregnancy? Next slide, please. Okay, so syempre number one question ng mga patients natin, what are the effects of COVID-19? Ano ba yung effects ng COVID-19 sa ating pregnant patients? So next slide please. 
a large majority of the pregnant patients who get COVID actually have um, mild flu-like symptoms only. So they have fever, cough, dyspnea, or difficulty of breathing, or shortness of breath, muscle pain, muscle pain, headache. Usually, ito lang naman. A big part of the pregnant patients who get COVID usually just experience these symptoms. But unfortunately, there is a small percentage of pregnant patients who get infected who get the moderate or severe type of the disease. So, sila yung mga nag-necessitate ng hospitalization and sometimes, unfortunately, even intensive care unit admission. Next slide, please. As for the fetus naman, so, in the early guidelines released by the Society for Maternal Fetal Medicine, um, they said that there was no evidence of um, a risk for stillbirth or NICO admission. However, in the in the latter guidelines, no, they said that um, studies show that there was higher risk of stillbirth and admission to the neonatal ICU for those babies born to COVID positive mothers. However, up to date, there is no evidence of intrauterine infection with COVID. So, hindi pa natin napuprove yung vertical transmission, meaning pag positive si mommy, natatransmit niya yung COVID virus also to the baby. As of now, hindi pa natin siya napuprove. Wala pang enough evidence to prove that. And currently also, it is considered unlikely to cause congenital defects. No? But siguro to be on the safe side, we offer um, fetal anomaly screening or congenital anomaly scanning for patients who were positive, for pregnant patients who were positive for COVID. Next slide, please. Okay, so first part of my lecture will discuss on prenatal care. So, ano ba ang mangyayari? Ano ba yung changes that the pregnant patients expect no? with prenatal care now that we are in a pandemic? So, normally, no, we, we recommend regular prenatal care with your obstetricians no, or with other healthcare providers to ensure a safe and healthy delivery, pregnancy and delivery. However, since we are in a pandemic, so there, there are changes in the frequency of prenatal visits to limit the, the exposure of the mothers no, to, to other patients or other people who might be positive for the virus. No? So as much as possible, um, limit natin yung prenatal care. So for my next slide, I will, there's, there's a table no, showing the recommendation, the current recommendation for prenatal visits. Now, for the first visit, so again, yung first line, less than 11 weeks, that's the first visit. That is usually the longest. No? That's usually the longest prenatal visit because this is the time when we get your complete uh, medical history, complete family history. We assess if the pregnant patient is high risk, is considered high risk. No? We ask for all the possible um, exposures, previous surgeries, previous diseases. So it is during this time that we assess all of this. So medyo matagal to. So we, li we want to limit that kasi prolonged contact, tapos close contact yun eh. So we limit that. For the first prenatal checkup, we advise a teleconference. So pwede tayo mag-consult with our obstetricians via teleconference kasi ito yung mahabang question and answer portion. So limit natin yung contact, we do a teleconference. Um, unless um, we suspect a COVID pregnancy. So if during the, the, the interview or the medical history taking, nagsususpecting obstetrician yun na mukhang ectopic yung pregnancy, so we will advise you to come um, to the hospital or to the clinic to be assessed personally by your obstetrician. Tapos, um, if you look at the subsequent visits, so it's not as frequent as the usual recommended prenatal visits. Before, we recommend that you do a monthly visit up to 28 weeks, um, every two, week, two weeks na visit from 28 weeks to 36 weeks, and from 36 weeks to delivery weekly. So we don't, we will not do that anymore during this pandemic. No, um, we can do um, teleconferencing lang with your with your obstetricians. You just need to see your obstetricians, no, and to do lab work and ultrasound specifically during the 20 weeks, um, 28 weeks. Tapos for the 32 and 36 weeks, um. An, an ultrasound may be recommended no, if high risk. Later, I will, will explain it for that. For the postpartum, ganun din. So later, i-explain ko din siya in detail. Next slide, please. Yan. So 
I will just show this slide, no, the danger signs of pregnancy. Because siyempre, we will stick with the teleconference, telemedicine or teleconferencing um, to avoid close contact no, with the, with the physicians or with other with other patients or other people, no? Kaya sa bahay lang tayo magpo-consult. However, when you see these signs, this wa this warrants um a visit to your doctor or a visit to the emergency room. So, when you have fever and chills, which may be a sign of infection, persistent vomiting, which may be a sign of um, elevated blood pressure, or which may cause dehydration. So, hindi pwedeng ma-manage naman sa bahay kung severely dehydrated na yung pregnant patient. Pain during urination, which may be a sign of um, urinary tract infection, swelling of face and fingers, so edema, baka nagmamanas yung face or yung fingers, so which may be a sign of preeclampsia, which is yung pregnancy-related hypertension, severe or pers persistent headache, ganun din, which may be associated with preeclampsia or any neurologic problems, blurring of vision, ganun din, vaginal bleeding, which may be a sign of later labor or other ser um, serious conditions such as placenta previa or abrupt placenta, abdominal pain, no, which may be a, or contractions, which may be a sign of preterm labor, watery vaginal discharge, so baka nag, nag, nag pre labor rupture of membranes, pala, or preterm rupture of membranes. That's very um, uh, tawag dito, important na ma address kayo personally ng doctor nyo. And of course, yung decreased fetal movement. So, your doctors naman will tell you how to, to do fetal movement counting para masabi nyo if um, hindi normal or if abnormally decreased yung fetal movement. Um, next slide, please. Okay. So, the recommendation of the of the PSOO or the Society for Ultrasound in Obstetrics and Gynecology is to limit ultrasound procedures. So, unless the unless your doctor tells you that it is warranted, so we advise that you do not get an ultrasound. Um, tawag namin dito yung social scanning. So, as much as possible, we avoid that during this pandemic. So, ano ba yung social scanning? Yung mga 3D, 4D, yung mga... Minsan kasi I encounter patients na magpapascan lang just to see the gender. So parang na-excite sila kasi di ba nauuso ngayon yung mga gender reveal. So excited sila to do the gender reveal parties. Gusto na nila mag magpa-ultrasound para lang makita yung gender. So we discourage that kasi um, ultrasound, no? ultrasound scanning is considered close contact. Magkalapit na magkalapit kasi yung doc, yung sonologist and yung patient. Tapos it takes a few minutes no para para matapos natin yung ultrasound procedure eh lalo na if we're doing a 3D 4D minsan pag hindi cooperative si baby medyo matagal talaga so we we encourage patients no to just stick to what your obstetricians um advise you to have so wag na tayo magsascan pa in between if hindi naman talaga siya necessary so we go back to the to the table next slide please we go to my previous table i Sorry, wala pala siya. So, yeah, we go back to my previous table. So, you look at the third third column which shows yung mga ultrasound schedule. So, ito lang sana. We stick with this para hindi na kayo, um, para nalilimit natin yung exposures nyo sa, sa hospitals or sa clinics. So, at 11 to 13 weeks, that's where we do the first ultrasound for dating. No, that's the most reliable kasi to, to um, use, uh, that's the most reliable ultrasound use to date the baby, no? lalo na if yung mga pregnant patients natin are unsure of their menses or irregularly menstruating. So at this time, kasi we can also do the nuchal translucency, no? um, which is a marker, soft marker for certain um, chromosomal anomaly. So pwede na siyang isabay. So isasabay na natin siya para isang ultrasound na lang. Tapos at around 20 weeks, we do another scan for the anatomy. So at this time, we do either the... Um, Yun scan for the fetal anatomy or the congenital anomaly scan. So we do it during this time. Tapos actually after that, if not indicated, if wala naman tayong nakikita problem sa baby, pwede na hindi na tayo mag-ultrasound or maybe isa na lang before mag-deliver. At 32 and 36, so nakalagay dyan if indicated. No, there's a separate recommendation kasi for high-risk patients. So who are considered high-risk, those who are, um, those um, who, who have, um, comorbidities, no, such as diabetes, hypertension. So, sa kanila, hindi pwede na wala na tayong ultrasound until mga anak, no? Hindi pwede kasi the babies need constant close follow-up. So, if indicated, yan, we will do the scan at 32 and 36 weeks. Tapos, yan. 
yung mga other labs, isasabay na lang din natin siya para isang visit na lang kayo sa hospital or sa clinic, less exposure for our patients. Next slide, please. Yan. So, we go now to the intrapartum care. So, intrapartum care pertains to yung course ng mga pregnant patients natin during labor and delivery, no? up to delivery. So, um, I will show you, no, yung patients natin, what, what you expect, what you will expect um, once na na-admit na kayo sa hospital. So, next slide, please. So, all of our hospitals, including QualiMed, we require an RT-PCR test no? prior to admission. Um, the validity of the RT-PCR test, particularly for our hospital, is seven days. So, if after seven days, hindi pa nagde-deliver yung, yung pregnant patient, we need to do another one. We need to do a re-swab. Um, ito yung medyo tricky part kasi ang hirap, lalo na for those na hindi naman scheduled CS, no? those na nag, nagtatry tayo ng ng normal labor and delivery, so hindi naman natin mapipredict exactly when magde-deliver yung patients. Well, yung recommended is to do it around 37 or 38 weeks, yung swab. Kasi pag sobrang maaga, baka mag-lapse. Kung sobrang namang late, baka maunahan na tayo ng labor, hindi pa natin napapaswab yung patients natin. Or maybe, um, your obstetrician will, will assess, no? If medyo nagkakaroon na kayo ng konting contractions, nagkakaroon na ng konting blood issue, or maybe um, pag inai kayo ng, ng obstetrician, dilated na, med dilated na yung cervix, or medyo nag-efface na, luminipis na yung cervix, that's the time siguro magre-request ng RT-PCR kasi mukhang anytime in the next week pwede na kayong mag-go into labor. No? So, yeah, i-assess kayo ng obstetrician regarding the timing of when the swab test will be done. Kasi sayang din pag nag-lapse, um, maggagawa tayo ng re-swab. Pag hindi naman tayo nagpa-test, so later explain ko kung anong mangyayari pag hindi kayo na-swab. No? So kung paano saan kayo dadali na areas in the labor room and delivery room. Next slide, please. Okay, so this is what the patient will expect no once na nag nandun na sa labor room. So, syempre, there's droplet precaution. So, you expect na you will see all the staff wearing masks, wearing face shields, wearing PPEs, no? It's a protection not only for us, but also for you, no? So, we are also protecting our patients um, from possibly getting infected with the virus. So, may droplet precautions talaga inside the, the labor room and delivery room. We minimize the people inside. So, only the necessary um, personnel will be allowed inside. Um, kaya this time then may mga patients kasi na nagre-request pa rin na, Doktora, pwede po ba kasama yung asawa ko sa loob? Or pwede po ba kasama yung nanay ko sa loob? So, right now, we discourage that. We don't allow that. Kasi, yun nga, as much as possible, we we minimize yung exposures natin no, with each other. So, unnecessary personnel will not be allowed inside the labor room and the delivery room. So we will follow the usual newborn practices. No, If if COVID negative naman si mommy, negative naman, ayun, if COVID negative naman si mommy, we still follow the usual newborn practices. Magdidiling cord clamping pa rin tayo, unang yaka pa rin, ipapaskin to skin contact pa rin si baby. So ganun pa rin, we still follow the same practices. Um, use of N95 respirator as necessary. For, so, there are instances kasi, although very rare naman, when we need to convert to a general anesthesia procedure. So, i-intubate natin yung, yung pregnant patient and that is an aerosol generating procedure. So, to protect our, pers our, our health personnel, so they will use N95 respirator no, as added protection. Um, use of EFM as necessary. So, EFM is electronic fetal monitoring. So, ito yung kinakabit na fetal monitor. So, um, we still use this continuous um, monitoring no? if necessary, lalo na if nakakadetect tayo ng, ng pagbagal dun sa heartbeat ng baby. No? So, baka nadidistress si baby. So, we will we still advocate the use of this no? pagkailangan talaga. Next slide, please. Yan. So, what if a pregnant patient gets COVID-19? So, ito ang question ng mga mami, paano pag pregnant ako, buntis ako, tapos na-infect ako with COVID. So, anong mga gagawin? Ano ba yung guidelines regarding this? Next slide, please. Yan. So, when a pregnant patient becomes symptomatic, initially, we still um, recommend, hindi, 
una pala, hindi ko na nalagay dito. What if you're asymptomatic? So, what if you're asymptomatic, pero for some reason, nagpa-swab ka. For example, nagkaroon ka ng exposure with a positive patients or nagkaroon ng rise in cases in your area, so gusto mo magpa, magpa-test and turns out positive siya. So, positive ka. So, if a pregnant patient um, test, tests positive for COVID-19 and she is asymptomatic, we recommend um, ano lang, home quarantine. No? So, home quarantine lang, isolate. Yung usual precautions pa rin for those who are not pregnant. So, pareho lang. Wala namang additional recommendations. Um, we just advise that you consult regularly with your obstetrician no, via phone para nare-report nyo lahat yung symptoms nyo dun sa doctors nyo. And your obstetrician will tell you if necessary ba na na magpunta sa hospital or okay lang to stay at home. No? Um, worry nyo, so paano doc yung mga prenatal visits namin madidelay? No? Some, some doctors, they, they ask their patients to purchase a doctor yung personal na handheld doctor and um, a sphygmomanometer, yung pangkuha ng blood pressure. Um, for those na diabetic, ina-advise din bumili ng glucometer, yung pang-measure ng sugar, para na monitor nyo pa rin at home kahit naka-quarantine kayo because of the virus. So, punta naman tayo when a patient becomes symptomatic. So, if you become symptomatic, initially, you can still consult via telemedicine and your obstetrician will assess if okay pa rin for you to stay at home or you need hospitalization. Kasi for those who are mildly symptomatic, we still recommend home quarantine. Sa bahay pa rin, manage at home. Uh, manage, manage symptomatically. So, the usual, drink lots of fluid, take your supplements, take vitamins, isolate, avoid contact with other people in the household. So, it's the same. Um, yun lang, dapat close, in close, um, tawag dito, contact via phone kayo with your obstetricians para if any additional symptoms come up, you can be advised whether you need to be hospitalized or not. Tapos yun nga, regarding yung monitoring sa baby, you can do it at home. Your obstetricians will guide you on what to do, no? Check your baby's heartbeat, um, fetal movement counting, yung check ng BP and yung sugar. So, eagle guide kayo ng obstetrician on how to do that while you are in quarantine at home. Next slide, please. On the other hand, no? When we have um, moderate to severe sy- symptoms. So, those are requiring hospitalization. So, same protocols lang will be observed, no? For those who are non-pregnant. So, hindi na ako mag-discuss with the specific medications given kasi we will reserve that for our for our doctors. For Pero for the pregnant patients, suffice it to say na, yun nga, same protocols will be observed um, for hospitalization. So, you might be given IV fluids for hydration, um, medications will be will be given um, uh, accordingly, depending sa kung anong symptoms yung ima-manifest. The baby will be monitored regularly in the hospital, whether you are in a regular ward, regular COVID ward, or in the ICU. So, yung monitoring ng, ng baby will be there. No? So, yun. same lang yung protocols that will be observed for pregnant and non-pregnant patients. Next slide, please. Yeah, so we go now to the ano, to the postpartum care. Um, postpartum care, um, medyo magkaibang, magkaiba talaga as compared to before, no? So next slide, please. Regarding, ayan, eto same lang. Yung immediately postpartum is the same, like I've said. So uh, previous protocols would be observed, no? So ganun pa rin, they need cord, skin to skin, etc. However, if the mother is COVID positive or the mother is, um, if the mother's status is unknown, so wala siyang swab or naglapse yung swab test niya. So the baby will stay with the mother in the area for COVID-19 patients, however, naka-separate sila. So the baby will be kept in an isolate, nakahiwalay siya from the mother. So hindi natin i-observe yung skin to skin. If the mother is positive or the mother is um, has an unknown COVID status. Next slide, please. Yan, dito tayo magkakaroon ng changes from, from our previous practices. So, we will pra- we practice expedited discharge, meaning we do not encourage um, prolonged hospital stay after delivery. 
para ma-prevent na natin na doon pa kayo makakontract ng disease. Although we have protocols naman in place no, na hindi naman magkahali yung patients, but still, no, gusto natin i-limit as much as possible yung exposure to the hospital or to other people. No? So for normal delivery, we try as much as possible to discharge you after a day. So pag hindi naman ganun kalakas yung reading, contracted naman yung uterus nyo, yung regarding sa episiotomy site, yung sugat, no? after a normal delivery, if wala namang problems, we discharge you after one day. No? For cesarean delivery naman, as much as possible, two days. No? Basta walang problem dun sa sugat, um, basta naka, naka, tawag dito, may bowel movement na, nakautot na kayo, mukha namang nag-restore na yung bowel function, tapos, Uh, mula naman ibang ganun din, contracted uterus, hindi naman ganun kadalas yung bleeding. So, as much as possible, two days after cesarean, we discharge you from the hospital. Next slide, please. Okay, regarding postpartum follow-up, balik ulit tayo sa telemedicine. So, wala. Um, we encourage na um, hindi na kayo babalik sa hospital no, for postpartum unless meron talagang pressing problem that needs to be addressed. Pero regarding dun sa sugat, no, yung CS na CS scar, surgical scar, we encourage na you just send pictures, no, magandang pictures para makita namin if healing properly naman yung sugat. Um, regarding yung symptoms, you just relay your symptoms to your obstetrician via telemedicine and you will be advised accordingly. Um, pag lang talaga merong pressing problems no, that need to be addressed. This is the only time the, that you can go to the clinics or the hospitals. But otherwise, we can accomplish postpartum follow-up, yung pag-advise namin sa inyong through telemedicine na lang. Next slide, please. Okay, regarding breastfeeding, so ito yung question, no, usually ng mga mommy, can we breastfeed? So during this time no, of pandemic, we still encourage breastfeeding. No, We still encourage breastfeeding. We just advise you to to take precaution no um when breastfeeding your baby so syempre dapat laging malinis yung hands malinis yung katawan ng mommy before tayo magbe breastfeed no para in case lang na kunyari mag positive yung mommy eh hindi natin ma-transmit yung virus sa baby or malessen yung chance na ma-transmit natin siya sa babies natin for those naman who are positive no for those who are covid positive mothers so syempre we isolate you no so takahiwalay si baby but we encourage you to give your breast milk so how do you do that by regular Um, expression of milk. So, magpapump kayo ng, ng milk nyo. And yun pa rin ang ibibigay kay baby. Kasi, yun pa rin naman yung best talaga for your baby sa yung breast milk. So, hindi natin siya ititigil just because you are COVID positive. We just encourage you to please um, um, follow strict protocols to lessen naman yung chance na matransmit natin yung virus to other household members or to your baby. So, if you use, um, if you hand express, no, which is actually yun naman yung recommended ng DOH, hand expression lang, tapos ibibigay natin sa baby by cup feeding. Siyempre, dapat malinis yung kamay. No? Siguro nakamask while you are expressing your milk. Dapat malinis yung katawan no? para malesin yung chance of transmission of the virus. If you are using a pump, make sure na ma-clean, ma-sanitize, ma-sterilize na gusto yung pump before and after using no? to lessen the trans transmission of the virus. No? So, we still advocate breastfeeding. We continue breastfeeding no, for those who are COVID negative, for those who are COVID positive mothers. Next slide, please. Ito ang pinaka, yan, <laughs> pinaka uso ngayon, vaccination, kasi nag-start na tayo ng vaccine rollout. So, ito ang talagang question ng mga, ng mga patients. No? Pwede ba ako makareceive ng vaccine, doktora? Pwede ba safe ba sa baby? So, According to, mahirap kasi, no, um, wala pa talagang enough um, studies, no, to back it up. Kasi bagong-bago lang talaga yung vaccine. Even in other countries naman, kaka-start lang din nila ng vaccination late last year. So, wala pa talaga tayong enough data. Pero, theoretically speaking, no, if we look at the, the makeup of the vaccines that were made, Um, against COVID-19, um, strictly speaking, I, no, not strictly speaking, theoretically speaking, um, unlikely naman siya to cause side effects no, to the baby. Um, but um, according to the recommendations of ACOG, the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, and the recommendations of the World Health Organization and the DOH, um, we, will, we are not... Um, We do not deny vaccination to pregnant patients, especially if they are frontliners. So, 
if doctors or um, nurses in the health field or yun nga, basta frontliners, no, tapos pregnant, we don't deny the vaccine to them, but um, we give it during the second or third trimester na. No? Tapos, ang recommendation din nila is um, after the vaccine, after getting the second dose of the vaccine, we wait at least three months before getting pregnant, no? just to be sure, just to be safe. Kasi nga, right now, wala pa talagang um, solid evidence showing whether it affects the baby or not. So just to be on the safe side. Next slide, please. Okay. So to end my to end my lecture. So everybody is encouraged to stay at home, especially our pregnant patients. Oh, kasi may mga nakikita pa akong pregnant patients na nasa mall. So sana wag na lang, no? Um, limit your um, limit going out of the house, no? Unless you lang for check up. Or if kailangan niyo talaga makita yung doctor niyo, siguro that's the only time that you are, um, that it is valid for you to go out. Otherwise, you just stay at home para ma-prevent natin na ma-infect kayo ng virus. And kasi nga, up to now, hindi pa natin talaga sure na sure na sure 100% kung wala talagang effect kay baby yung being infected with the COVID virus. So stay at home tayo. Um, it's a very difficult time for all pregnant patients, no? Fortunately or unfortunately, ang daming nabubuntis pa naman ngayong time na to. Siguro kasi pandemic na sa bahay lahat, so ang dami talagang nabuntis. Um, it is a very difficult time for pregnant patients and also a very difficult time for us obstetricians kasi we are navigating through this pandemic, no? Um, new beast tayo lahat with this pandemic. So lahat bago, lahat ngayon natin lang natutunan, no? It's difficult but if we follow the guidelines, no? If you listen, if the pregnant patients will listen to their obstetricians, ko ano ang dapat gawin, then we will we will still be assured of a safe and healthy um pregnancy and delivery, no. So wala naman tayong kailangan i worry, no. Basa we follow the the guidelines set to us. Okay. Thank you so much for inviting me um to give this lecture, and I hope you learned a lot more from the lecture. Thank you so much, Dr. Pamela, for a very informative presentation. Um, indeed, Doc, no? sobrang kindly talaga ito dahil sa tumataas na census ng yes. ating uh, pregnant uh, patients. Yes. So now, Doctor, we will go ahead and take some time for questions now. Just a reminder, please be sure to type your questions into the question box in your control panel. All right, so um, we have one question here, Doc. Ang tanong po, will the hospital separate me from my baby if I test positive? Yeah, like like I said a while ago, no, the the protocol in our hospital, I don't know the protocol for the other hospitals, pero actually halos pareho lang naman. In Qualimed, if the mother is positive, so the mother will deliver in the area designated for, in the labor and delivery area designated for COVID-positive patients. Paglabas ng baby, the baby will stay there also, but um, naka-separate siya in an isolate. So we will not practice yung skin-to-skin -skin contact, unang yakap. We will not practice that initially if the mother is positive for COVID. To prevent na matransmit ni mommy kay baby yung virus. Alright, thank you, Doc. Um, Next question po. What about concerns for people who are trying to get pregnant? Do vaccines affect fertility? There was an initial issue no, about that. They said that the, vac the vaccine affects fertility, but actually it was debunked. Na. So according to the ACO or the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, it does not really affect fertility. So hindi naman. Um, it's just that um, we ask the patients to wait um, at least three months, no, after giving of vaccines, to be sure lang na na safe, no, hindi siya. Kasi nga, yun nga, we discourage na it be given during the first trimester kasi hindi pa natin talaga alam exactly kung ano ang pwede niyong effects, especially during that time na nag-perform pa lang yung baby. So, yun lang naman. But in terms of fertility, yung ability to conceive, no, according to latter um, studies naman, hindi naman daw siya nakaka Thank you, Doc. Um, next question po. Uh, for example, doctor, um, na expose ako sa positive na tao. So should I still continue breastfeeding? Um, 
it's syempre to be safe, na safe, na safe, na safe talaga. If known exposure, talagang sure na na, na nag-positive yung other person na yon tapos yung exposure mo sa kanya was considered close contact. Pag close contact kasi may certain meters na mag, yung distance nyo, tapos at least 15 minutes. Kung hindi naman kasi, okay lang naman. Or hindi naman siya considered close contact, okay na. Pero if close contact talaga, siguro I would recommend na mag-isolate muna from the baby. Like I've said before, um, pwede naman mag-breastfeed na hindi naman kailangan nakalatch. So, naka-separate, naka pero pwede kayong mag-express ng milk. Yung pagbigay ng breast milk sa baby, hindi siya dapat mag-stop. So, we can do that by by expressing milk and giving it by cup feeding. No? So, hindi yun kailangan itigil. Pero yung latching, siguro, until hindi ma-establish yung status ng mommy mismo. No? Um, better kung magpa-swab siya. At least kung mag-negative sa swab, pwede sila mag-latch ulit. Pero yun, um, tawag dito, kung hindi ma-establish hindi siya magpapaswab o hindi ma-establish talaga yung status niya in terms of infection with the virus, it's better siguro na mag-separate muna para hindi naman mahawa si baby. So, yun. Mag-continue mag na lang mag-breastfeed using express milk. Thank you, Doc. Um, again, if you have any questions, you can write them on the chat box. Uh, but then we will be proceeding to our next question po, Doc. Um, so, this pandemic po kasi most of the people are experiencing stress, no? So, medyo affected na din talaga ang ating uh, mental health. So, what more ang ating mga pregnant women? So, Doc, what is your tip po or your tips for them to handle uh, the situation, no? Um, it's not just about uh, physically, emotionally, but also uh, mentally. Yung kanilang preparation towards their pregnancy at this uh, point. Siguro, um best person to 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 um to tell us about mental health is yung ating mga psychologists or psychiatrists but ako personally even pre-pandemic no even before this pandemic yung depression anxiety um panic attacks are actually common during pregnancy no medyo common talaga siya kasi nga medyo stressful yung pregnancy by itself siya pa lang in itself eh, stressful na siya for the women tapos sabayan mo pa ng hormones na tumataas so mas lalo sila magiging prone to depression anxiety ako personally what i advise my patients is um to to continue certain activities that make, make them happy or that make them busy no para malesen natin yung mga um, bouts of depression or anxiety. So, kaya ako personally, ah, although siyempre it's different now that we have the pandemic, pero ako personally, hindi ako advocate ng mga patients na nagre-resign from work during pregnancy. Mas gusto ko na nag-work kasi there is something that keeps them busy. As long as wala namang obstetrical indication for them to to stay at home. no During this pandemic, siyempre medyo mas challenging yan. Kasi nga nasa bahay lang tayo lahat. So, whether we are working or not, talagang we are we are encouraged or at, at a certain point, no, parang we are forced to stay at home no, for the benefit of ourselves and other people. So, still, parang ganun pa rin yung advice ko. No? Do something that keeps you happy or keeps you busy para wala masyadong time to wallow and to... to to be depressed. So, kanya-kanya naman tayo eh, each patient. Kaya nga, if patients are showing signs of depression or anxiety, we advise them to consult a psychiatrist or a psychologist para ma-process kung ano yung dapat nilang gawin. Ano. Pero, yun, to prevent, to prevent yung mga ganyan, yun nga, um, do a, ang tawag dito, do a hobby, you know, yung mga iba, happy sila with plants, sige go, pregnant patients, you go and take care of plants, no? kung ano man. Um, if you have other children, you spend time with your other children, doing activities, no? hindi man tayo pwede mag, mag, mag tawag dito, magkita-kita, or mag, mag party, or mag get together, pwede naman via Zoom, no? You get in touch with friends, you get in touch with family, kasi they will be your support group, eh, for you to be able to get through this um, pandemic, no? During pregnancy. So, that is what I advise. Thank you, Doctora. And um, we have here another question from... Uh, Ow, again, um, teenage pregnancy rate has really gone up during the pandemic. I've heard from some that they ask from the Barangay Health Center access to contraceptives, but they were declined due to, 
to them being minors. Personally, Doc, would you prescribe pills or injectable to sexually active uh, active teens? Um, nako, ganito. <laughs> Medyo may conflict tayo dyan because um, ako kasi personally, whether minor or not, whether it's the pandemic or not, personally, because of my religious convictions and my personal beliefs, I don't I don't prescribe or I don't advise any form of artificial contraception. So, siguro, um, to answer ma'am's question, siguro yung ibang considerations ang magandang makasagot niya, no? whether I advise. Yan. Pero, wala ata tayong magagawa dun eh. I think for now, kasi the law dictates that hindi ata tayo pwede magbigay ng contraception to minors unless merong consent from their parents. Kasi like, for example, we give them to minors for abnormal uterine bleeding no, or other or hormonal imbalance. no So, we give them under the supervision and consent of their parents. So, pag wala talagang consent, hindi natin mako-force yung mga barangay to provide them. And I think more than giving them contraception, no, I think the best way to go about it is to lecture our kids that they should not engage in premarital sex, actually. So even the DOH, if you look at the, yung uh, parang ad, ad of the DOH regarding contraception, actually they are emphasizing on abstinence. Hindi naman nila sinasabi na sige go, let us have sex because the contraceptives are there. No. The stress is still on abstinence. No, We should educate our children, young as they are, No, basta na, makakaintindi na sila that sex is reserved for married people. No, So, I think mas mag-focus tayo doon. Regarding access, right now we cannot do anything about it because that is what the law dictates, if I'm not mistaken. That it cannot be just given to minors no? without the supervision of them. Thank you, Doctor. I really loved your answer po. No, talagang ano siya. Um, we cannot do anything about it, but we also have different perspectives, no, religiously and then personally. And um, sobrang maganda yung advice si Doctor dito sa question po ni Ao. So thank you din daw po, Doctor. All right. So um, do we have any other questions on the chat box? PJ, do you have any question to Doctor? Oh, hi. Hi, Doc. Um, actually, um, kanina, Doc, you've answered the question regarding uh, pregnancy, pero during pregnancy naman yung phase. So, how about, Doc, um, women na nagsasuffer ng baby blues? Kasi I have friends na kapapanganak lang this pandemic, tapos they're currently suffering baby blues or maybe a postpartum depression, I'm not sure. Uh, what can you suggest, Doc, to them? Um, It's important for them to recognize if it's just the postpartum blues or actual depression. No? So that is very important. Ako personally, I advise my patients during the postpartum visit kung ano ba yung difference ng dalawa. Because postpartum blues is, is normal, no? but postpartum depression is not. So mas maganda during the postpartum visit, may relative na kasama. Best kung yung husband nandun. No? Or, or, or parent siguro ng patient. So, I tell them na it's normal days no? um, after delivery na nakaka-feel ka ng parang sobrang sadness, extreme sadness. Um, minsan, nagkakaroon ng ideation of not wanting to take care of your, your baby. Parang ayaw mo siyang makita, ayaw mo siyang marinig. May mga ibang patients na gano'n, yung naririnig nila yung iyak ng baby nila, parang na natataranta sila, hindi nila alam yung gagawin. But they, that may be normal. If it occurs a few days lang after delivery, so okay lang yun. So, pero, if it if the symptoms last for, if I'm not mistaken, two weeks or more, no? two or three weeks or longer than that, parang hindi naman nagbabago, ganun lagi, doktora, bakit ganun? Iyak na siya ng iyak. Two weeks na, three weeks na, mag-iisang buwan na. Araw-araw umiiyak. Araw-araw ayaw niyang alagaan yung baby. So, that is the time that you need to consult, ano na, um, a professional, you know? Kasi the, the psychiatrist, the psychologist, are the ones better equipped to assess ano ba yung problem, um, if may problem na talaga, no, ano ba ang kailangan gawin and if nagne-necessitate ba ng medication um, no? so 
dapat tanggalin natin yung ganung stigma, no? Especially to our pregnant patients. Minsan kasi yung tendency na parang sinasabi lang ang ate mo naman, parang hindi naman hindi ko, 'di ba? Minsan ganun guilty tayo diyan minsan na parang ang arte naman ito, parang eh, ako nga nung nabuntis ako, ganto naman ako. No, hindi natin alam they are dealing pa lang with depression, with postpartum depression. So, anong dapat gawin, no? Um, as as family members or as friends, we should be sensitive. No, pag sinabi sa atin ng friend natin or ng family member natin na parang parang hindi maganda ang pakiramdam ko, ayoko makita yung baby ko, ayoko siyang ano, nalulungkot ako, hindi ko maintindihan, parang ganyan. We should be sensitive. Huwag natin sila i-dismiss na sasabihin natin na, no ka ba? Kayang-kaya mo yan. ba? Diba? Kinaya ko nga eh. Hindi pwede yun. Kasi kanya-kanya tayo. Baka naman mamaya, nagdi-deal pala talaga siya with clinical depression. No? Tapos nag-ask na siya for help sa atin at hindi naman natin siya tinulungan. No? So, we should be sensitive as family members. And, dapat sa atin manggaling. Kasi sa patients, hindi naman sa kanila manggagaling yun na ay kailangan ko nang pumunta sa psychiatrist or sa psychologist to ask for help. Hindi. I think more on sa family members yun manggagaling na ay kailangan niya ng tulong so kailangan ko siyang samahan or kailangan ko i-facilitate yung consult for her. Regarding prevention, no prevention ng mga ganito, no? according to studies, um, nalilesen yung postpartum depression if during the pregnancy, maganda yung support group ng pregnant patients. No? So, very important yan na um, as family members, nandun yung support, no? nandun yung assurance na, ay, nandito kami for you, nandito kami pag lumabas yung baby mo, tutulungan ka namin mag-alaga. So, nakakatulong yun to lessen yung postpartum depression. And like I've said earlier, yun nga, um, if during the, post, uh, during the pregnancy, no? during the pregnancy, walang ginagawa yung pregnant patient, mas mas mataas yung chance for postpartum depression. No, mas nakakalesen ng 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 chance or occurrence of postpartum depression if during the pregnancy happy yung mommy. Meron siyang pinagkakaabalahan, no? Meron siyang nabibisi siya with work, yung may hobby, na medyo doon naka-focus, maraming friends na na may access siya, na pwede niya makausap anytime, no? So these are the things that we can do. Pero yun nga, pag talagang nandun na tayo sa stage of clinical depression, we leave it up to the experts. Talagang we advise consult with either a psychiatrist or a psychologist. No? Kasi we can only do so much. No? May mga iba talaga that go into clinical depression. And before pa mangyari na they will harm their baby or they will harm themselves because a lot of of cases no, na, nangyari yan. Kasi dinidismiss lang na, ano ba, kaya mo yan? Sige lang nag end up na hina-harm nila ang baby or nagsusuicide yung mommy. So, we want to prevent that. Okay. Thank you, Doc. Alright. Thank you, Paige and uh, Dr. Pam for your um, answer po, no? Uh, I think we will go down to our last question here on our chat box from um, Mom Day of our Corp Marketing. May supplements po ba that can help a pregnant woman to lessen the blues? Um, there are none that I know of that directly prevent. Wala naman. The supplements are given, supplements are given to pregnant patients to prevent micronutrient and macronutrient deficiencies, no? Calcium, folic acid, ferrosulfate. Pero um supplements that lessen the blues, none that I know of. Siguro meron na lumalabas mga anecdote Dahil pa lang siguro. Pero those na established and are backed up talaga by studies, up to date, wala. So, yun. Alright. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Da. I hope that um, the Doc Pam already answered all the questions that we received. And uh, once again, thank you for sending in all your questions. If you want to get a direct consultation from Dr. Pamela Varela, you may schedule an appointment. Please uh, share the slide po. All right. So here's the clinic schedule po of Dr. Pam. Every Thursday from 1 o'clock in the afternoon until 3 o'clock in the afternoon, room three, uh, 203, OB Gynae Clinic. And the contact details po are shown on your screen. So um, thank you very much, Dr. Pam. Thank we you. appreciate your time and the information that you shared to us. Thank you. Um, EJ, any acknowledgement? 
Okay, so thank you again, Dr. Pam and Dr. Mel, for sharing their wonderful presentations today with us. And just to acknowledge the presence of our City Health Office, we would like to acknowledge Dr. Rosel Tolentino. Okay, we also have here Dr. Betsaida Banaag, our City Health Office consultant, and Dr. Catherine Misolis Beltran, one of their medical specialists. So we are uh, we are really grateful to be with you guys, and thank you for sa pagpaparticipate ng ating program. Okay. And I think uh, Luven has some surprise, okay, to all our participants here. Yes, yeah, so before we go to our, ayan, so ito na ating good news. So as uh, mentioned in our official posters naman, we are giving away this health talk at your fingertips virtual voucher. So uh, exclusively only for the first 100 attendees of this webinar, service availment is from March 22 to 28, 2021 only. So itong virtual voucher na ito po will be sent directly to the email addresses of our attendees today. So um, uh, you may schedule an appointment first before you come over po dito sa ating hospital para mas maayos po yung ating um, appointment. No? So at least one day before po yung plan yung pagpapa-check up, mag-appointment na po tayo. So I will be sending the uh, contact details po of our uh, AHC audiometry, C. Mr. Percival Salangi. So this is in collaboration with Active Hearing Center. So thank you so much for collaborating with us. Um, by the way, this uh, promo code is transferable, so uh, but not convertible to cash. So for example, you cannot go here. You can give it to other people, so to your friends or to your relatives. Pero one time lang po siya pwede i-claim kasi meron siyang uh, unique na um, control number. Okay, so next. <laughs> Alright, also we are so excited to announce and share to you our ongoing promo, our Pinay Power promo. So um, you can avail a discounted servi uh, service up to 15% off. No, we have our um, package procedures. We also have our individual tests. So, nandito yung blood chem 10, breast ultrasound, transvaginal ultrasound, pop smear. No, so, meron po tong discount sa lahat po ng ating mga kababaihan. So, I hope you will grab this promo because this is uh, limited from March 15, 2021 up to May 15, 2021 only. So, um... Valid for single or multiple transactions with a promo period, limited to outpatient, cash or credit card transactions only, and promo rate cannot be concurrently availed with any other discounts or HMO. So for inquiries and appointments, po, uh, we will be giving or you can see the contact details po on the official poster that is posted on our Facebook page. Ayan. All right, PJ. Okay, thanks, Loven. And if you have any more questions or inquiries, just follow our Facebook page, okay? Para lagi ninyong um, makakatanggap ng updates, no? So just search Qualimed Hospital dash SJD and Bulacan, okay? And you will receive a lot of updates from us, okay? Especially our promos.